Hey, good morning, everybody. Mike Toy here, National Brokerage. I'm here with Greg Savala, and uh, today we're going to do a webcast on a couple different ideas, but the main idea and the main topic is Life Insurance Awareness Month. Um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. Life Insurance Awareness Month, what is it? Uh, Life Insurance Awareness Month was created in 2004, and the purpose was to help educate Americans about the importance of life insurance and also to serve as a rallying point for the industry. So people like me and you and, and everybody on the call. So it, it's just a good way to get everybody aware of it, talking about it, thinking about it, and kind of get the ball rolling. You know, now the summertime is over and we're going back into, uh, into a busy season again. So that was the purpose behind Life Insurance Awareness Month. So if it's something that maybe you weren't super aware of before or that you weren't using before, I'd encourage you to use it. Uh, it's, a, it's a good way to, to get your life insurance rolling again. Moving on to the next slide. And if, just side note too, if anybody has a problem seeing the screen or hearing us, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just, just raise your hand on there or, or shoot us a question in the question box. So moving forward. So social media, making awareness easy. Um, why do we use social media? I, I'm not going to go into it uh, a big deep dive into it, but social media is a good way to maximize your influence or maximize awareness with minimal effort. Yeah, it takes a little effort to get it going and creating the accounts, but once you've got a Facebook and an Instagram or whatever medium that you use, once you've got those up and running and you've got them connected, it's relatively easy to, to put material out there. So, for example, let's say you go to a website and you get a flyer that you like and you go, yes, this is something that I want to put out for people to see. Go to Facebook, you click post, it'll ask you if you want to share it on other mediums, you can click whatever mediums you want to use. So one post and it shares it to everywhere. Um, so if it's not something that you're doing now, I would encourage you to give it a try, uh, just so that you can, again, maximize the amount of influence and awareness with minimal amount of effort. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Greg. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I've got the easy stuff. So, you know, what is life insurance? Now, don't laugh out loud at that type of question. But honestly, it's a question I think we need to take more seriously within our industry. Um, you know, life insurance, this is just my commentary. It's basically, it's what you make of it. And it is what you make of it in front of your client. So if it's important to you, oftentimes it'll become important to your client. So what I mean by that is we've had a really good increase in sales in some accounts that did pitch life insurance in the past. So for example, we had some property casualty shops that did it and they said that they'd always do, you know, do you need life insurance? You know, do you want life insurance? They would ask the question, you know, pretty actively, not, not terribly, not every time, but they'd try to ask it, uh, you know, more often than not. And they didn't really have much success. We did a couple of webcasts, we did a couple of conference calls with them and really educated some of their agents, you know, of the nuances of life insurance and some of the benefits of it. And, they really felt that they had an increase in sales just because they actually believed the message. There's one thing to say, hey, do you have life insurance? There's another thing to really be passionate about it. And hey, have you have you checked this box? I mean, you you have a need for life insurance. I know what you have because I do your property casualty or my or your health or what have you. But have you looked at life insurance? Life insurance, is, if it's important to you, it will become important to the client. They can sense hey, a person's asking a question or a person's really passionate about what they're doing. And just keep that in mind, you know, it, it, life insurance is truly something that if anyone's ever given or paid a death claim, that's the worst time for a person to get, obviously, uh, money, but it does alleviate that other risk, risk and other fear that a person has. I just lost my spouse. That is terrible. I don't know what I'm going to do without my spouse. And now I don't even know what I'm going to do financially. If you can check the box of I'm bringing the financial cure to you, it's one thing that a person, it changes their life. And it's really important to just keep that in mind. What we do is a really important thing. And if we truly believe it, I think people would actually register that as, as uh, you know, something when they're listening to you. You know, make sure that you describe insurance with analogies. And what I mean by that is, you know, clients don't know what term insurance is. They don't necessarily know what a permanent plan is. They don't know the difference between the two. So even just using, you know, things that we take for granted, but term insurance, that is renting coverage. People know what renting versus owning is. And so renting coverage, you know, you, then you can further describe for a specific length of time, for a specific base amount, specific premium, 
but a client can conceptually understand renting versus owning coverage when you're describing things. Also using, you know, like premium, your premium is going to be $4 a day. That's the equivalent of a coffee a day. I know we've seen marketing of that, but I think it's powerful to bring that concept to the client as, hey, I do buy a coffee every day I drive into work, yet if I pass away, I have no coverage for my spouse or my children or anything of that nature. That's stupid. You know what? I'm going to allocate some money to, you know, to my family's financial stability if I do pass away. So it's just something that it's a good analogy to use, and there's different analogies out there, of course. But I think it brings it more into layman's terms so a client can better conceptualize what you're discussing with them. And using an example of, you know, I had a client. You know, so basically I'm talking to a 45-year-old gentleman. I had a client similar to you. You know, they were in their earning years. You know, the fears that they had were, you know, their mortgage. They had some living benefit uh, fears. And, they, you know, they had a particular budget that they wanted to do. When you talk about an example of uh, I had a guy or I had a gal, now you're not talking about them. It's not anything that's you know too personal to them, but now you can discuss, I had a person that was in a similar position, this is what we did, do you have interest in that? And it's a soft way to open that door with a client that may otherwise not be taking life insurance seriously. You know, and insurance is peace of mind. So basically, you know, how many boxes can they check off their list? And what I simply mean by that, everyone knows they need insurance, everyone knows they need car insurance, they know they need a lot of different things, but they don't do it because now nah, they just don't make it important to them. So if you can have a particular life policy that checks multiple boxes, I've got life insurance, I've got life insurance with living benefits, which is kind of a poor man's LTC product, if you will. And I also have a, a cash accumulation product in that same application that will help diversify my retirement. I just check three boxes by writing one policy with you. If you get a client thinking differently, you know, if you've ever had something that you've been waiting to do, you've just been putting it off, you feel good when you finally get it done. This is a situation where you can have the client check three different boxes with one product and it gets them in a better uh, financial st stable area and it gives them living benefits, it gives them life insurance, and it also gives them cash accumulation. That's powerful, but a client doesn't even know to ask you of that because they think life insurance is a certain thing. So again, don't assume you know the answer due to your experience. No, you know, really talk to the client, kind of dumb it down, put it in layman's terms, and give them examples. That way, they'll they'll better understand it. One thing I, you know, I will tell you, I told my reps this uh, this last week is my wife. She's besides her lapse in judgment of marrying me, she's actually a pretty smart person, and she had a life insurance policy that we wrote for her, and it was a term policy, and it went to ART rates. We already wrote a new policy for her, but she saw the ART notification. I said, oh, don't worry about it. We're actually just going to let that policy lapse. We already had another policy. That was kind of the design we had. It was more of a laddering type of policy. I go, so don't worry about it. Her question to me was, will it hurt my credit if I lapse it? I did, it blew my mind. I never even thought of something of that nature that would, a person would even conceptualize like that. So again, I'm the guilty party, assuming she knows what we know, but she was going to pay an ART rate, which quite frankly, it almost tripled because she thought that if she didn't, it was gonna affect her credit. So again, we don't wanna assume we know. We don't wanna assume the clients know, especially. So just you know, really go through the details and, 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 and allow, you know, basically elaborate on that. And I think it's gonna behoove you and your clients to make them more comfortable as a sale. If I can just jump in for one second, Greg. Uh, to Greg's note about life insurance is what you make it, kind of to play on that, that story a little bit. We had an example of a, an agent that changed the wording on non-working spouse insurance. So if you've ever tried to offer life insurance to someone's spouse, maybe a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, uh, and you, you call it non-working spouse or stay-at-home parent, don't be surprised if they don't get overexcited about it, you know, either of the spouses, because A, first spouse, you know, may not think it's necessary, and B, stay-at-home spouse, may not like the sound of a non-working spouse. It just doesn't have a lot of zing to it. So what he did is he called it director of home operations insurance. And if you think about it, he kind of goes into detail a little, but he talked about how if you don't think it's an important role, try to replace it. And they start going through the numbers and going through the, the steps and they go, oh, wow, it actually is a pretty important role. It's a lot like key man insurance, but for the home. So anyways, story there is that he called it 
director of home operations, and he has a lot of success doing it that way. So I just thought that was a good uh, tidbit to add to Greg's message there. Well, definitely creative marketing. It always works, and it's always good to you know address it with different clients. You know, last piece of this particular slide is just you know insurance changes every year, so the flexibility of the future is worth discussing. So basically, don't assume. That's a big part of this particular slide. You were talking term insurance. Term insurance now has some living benefits. Term insurance has a lot more flexibility to it. Term insurance has return of premium. So there's a lot of different assets, even within term, even though they're quote unquote renting the coverage. Again, not all terms the same. The more detail you bring out, not to inundate the client, but the more detail you in, in options you give to your client, the more prone they are to do business with you. Even if they decide on a most simplified term, it doesn't matter. You've opened their eyes to different nuances and opportunities. And like I always talk on all the different webcasts, that makes you different than the other person that's down the street that's just putting them on a rate sheet, running a quote, and calling it good. If you provide value, the client's going to perceive you as a good resource and a good asset. All right, next slide here. So do you have insurance? And this is a pretty quick uh, slide that will fly through, but you know, are you talking to your clients and are you truly asking them the question, um, you know, do you have life insurance? It can sometimes be as simple as that to turn on your life insurance quotes and your life insurance policies that you want to write. Again, like I mentioned in the previous slide, if you're not drinking the water, they can probably sense that. But if you truly believe in life insurance and you're truly asking the question, but why don't you have it? If you haven't done it, why not? It's a very simple uh, process to do. And as we've noted here, it's easy to even run them a sample quote. You can go onto our site, it takes about 30 seconds, and they're gonna appreciate that you're doing it. Because oftentimes, again, perception of client, oh, I don't wanna do life insurance because it's expensive. Then when you finally run them a quote, they're like, holy cow, that's actually cheap as heck on term insurance. I didn't realize I could buy that much coverage for that little money. And oftentimes that's the commentary we get is I just didn't know that this was such an easy thing to do, and also that can be for such an inexpensive amount, of, uh, amount to do it. So you know, just make it a habit to at least follow two steps of asking if they have insurance, running some quotes those so you can show, show them some different numbers, and it's going to lead to you know, more client persistency and better retention. So basically, if you're property casualty focused, health focused, whatever, AFLAC focused, or life insurance focused, you're going to want to ask that particular question, obviously, get the client more interested. And again, if you're doing primarily focusing on other things besides life insurance, more things, more insurance that you're going to lock your client into makes them more less prone to moving elsewhere. You're going to have better persistency and retention. And again, referrals. Again, a client's looking for a person that is a resource. And when you provide an educated client, they're going to tell their friends about that. Say, you know, I really spoke to Mike, and he's really knowledgeable of what uh, what they do. I think that's who you should go to. Uh, if you just ran a quote, eh, maybe not. If you just basically generally discuss something, eh, again, how much different are you than the next person down the street? So again, just a few little tips can really change your life as for marketing. Good points, very good points. And also, I'll, I'll add one other thing to that. Sometimes we don't see the results of doing that right off the bat. Sometimes we, we do those things, we run that quote, and we offer life insurance, and for whatever reason, they say no, and we move on with our with our lives. But they remember it later. And so then when something triggers the thought of, hey, maybe I should look into life insurance, they oftentimes will remember the fact that you offered it, and you do it, and you didn't shove it in their face. So I know that goes a long way with me, So uh, I, and I've seen results where it goes a long way with others. So just another reason to, to follow those habits. So. Changing, uh, changing course a little bit, talking about life insurance for businesses. This is a really underserved market, I think. And I think the reason is because the conception of business insurance is, <laughs> could be all kinds of things. What it is in its simplest form, I'm going to start with just the simplest way to put it. Key person insurance is just life insurance for the key person where the business is the owner and the beneficiary. That's it. Buy sell insurance is kind of the same. It's where you've got two partners, and each partner has a policy on the other. Typically, it's just a 10-year term. I mean, that's what I see a lot of, at least. It could be anything, but that's what it is in its simplest form. It's not a big, long, complicated thing. So if, for whatever reason, if you're, if you're thinking, ah, I don't want to dive into that because I'm just not knowledgeable, trust me, you're knowledgeable enough to do it. It is that simple. So that's what it is in its essence. Some reasons to 
to look into it or to be thinking about it and to offer it, how are most partnerships set up in a business? Typically, it's where if one of them dies, their spouse inherits whatever assets that they have, including the business. Most partners don't want to be partners with their partner's spouse. Feels like I'm saying the word partner a lot there, but you get what I'm saying. So most of the time, they don't get into that business and that partnership thinking, yeah, someday I'll, I'll be in this with their spouse. They don't want that. And probably the spouse doesn't want it either. So if something happens to one of those partners and they don't have a buy-sell agreement set up, that's the exact scenario they're going to find themselves in. So, you know, just something to bring up. I've, in my experience, a lot of people aren't even aware of it. They haven't even thought of that yet. So when you bring it up and you make them aware of it you know, and you do it tactfully, then they're a little more open to saying, okay, well, what can we do to, to avoid that? Simple. Just get a term policy. You can start there. And then you can grow and get more sophisticated as you go with it. So that's what it is in its essence. Um, moving on down the line here. I guess I've covered a lot of these bullet points. I won't go into to deep dive on all of them. But one other thing I'll say is don't be afraid to think outside the box. Just about anything is possible. So just a quick example uh, is rather than term insurance, if they like the idea of being insured, insuring their key man or or getting buy-sell uh, insurance on each other, something like that. But they don't like the idea of just terms. Like, I don't want to just throw my money away, and then in 10 or 20 years, boom, it's gone, and we got nothing to show for it. Maybe try a GUL. Yeah, GUL is going to be a little more expensive, but you have more options with the GUL. There's a lot of them out there now with the guaranteed return premium feature after 20 years. So it's, it's a really good way to present an alternative to term uh, for these businesses and say, well, here you go. After 20 years, if uh, if you don't want the policy anymore and for whatever reason that it's not needed, you can just surrender the policy and get all of your premiums returned to you. It's a, it's a nice way to spin it and it's very appealing to a lot of people. So just one example. And it becomes a marketing uh, opportunity. So but not only does it have cash accumulation, you have living benefits. So again, you don't have to die to get the coverage. And last but not least, it's a, it's a sales uh, approach too. If it's a key man coverage, Hey, key man, if we do the return of premium in 20 years, I will give that to you if you're still working for me. So it's a promotion for that person as well because they want to get to that 20th year so that they can get that lump sum as well. So it's attractive for both parties. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit another uh, nail that I hit a lot, but I hit it a lot for a very good reason, and that's policy reviews. Definitely the most exciting topic there is to talk about. <laughs> Great, so policy reviews, what is that exactly? Like, what does that mean if, <clears throat> let's say, okay, I'll do a policy review, what do I do? In its essence, all it really means is you're just reviewing whatever their current insurance situation is, and you're making sure that that is still the best uh, situation for them. So either uh, you're, you're either looking for lowering their premiums or increasing their coverage or changing their coverage type, whatever the case is. Maybe they've gotten married. Maybe they've gotten divorced. Maybe they've had more kids. Maybe maybe all kinds of things. So you're just looking at their current situation and trying to improve upon it if you can. Some reason, reasons for you to do it, <clears throat> other than the obvious, which is, well, I, I might get a, a sale out of this. I might get a life insurance sale or an annuity sale. There are other reasons, too. Doing it helps build value in you, even on those deals where you review it and you can't beat it at all. That still stays in their mind that, hey, this that was pretty cool that you looked at my insurance situation for me because I don't know anything about insurance. He looked at it and determined, hey, this is still the best deal for me. I didn't have to do anything. And he checked it out. I have peace of mind now. And oh, by the way, a couple years down the road, when something does change, who am I going to call now? I'm going to call that guy who I can trust, who isn't just trying to sell me. So that's one reason to do it. Um, there are also some side reasons. You'll get a lot of side sales from it. So let's say uh, I got a guy right now down in Florida who does policy reviews a lot. And we had one a few months back where we reviewed the policy. Didn't turn out that there was anything worth changing there. But they had a spouse who was terminally ill, had a policy that was getting ready to expire, but he still had a month left to convert. We were able to convert the policy. It he was a hero to this family who had no idea of the situation at all. And the agent made quite a bit of money on the deal. So 
that's just a, another way that you can benefit from doing policy reviews in ways that you don't necessarily see on paper at first. And last but not least, it really doesn't have to be complicated. Um, like Greg said earlier, if it sounds complicated, it is complicated. So rather than going into the all the scope that a policy review can be uh, with people, maybe just let them know that you just want to review it, make sure the beneficiaries are correct, make sure the coverage is correct, make sure they got the best deal. That's something that they can wrap their mind around pretty easily, and uh, it sounds simple, and they're going to be more willing to work with you on that. Good stuff. On the, pol on the policy review, I mean, we're going to fly through. We're almost at the end and the conclusion of the webcast, but just one thing about the policy review to keep in mind is you just, you've got a lot of different options that are going to pop up. Again, you're speaking in general terms, speaking in layman's terms, like we discussed earlier on the webcast, but it's going to open opportunities and it could be a, a, a very diverse list. So you've got IULs that are pretty attractive because, again, a lot of living benefits. That seems to be the in vogue thing. A lot of people are really looking at that. Return of premium depends on what the client's looking to do, but return of premium is attractive, not in with all carriers. So you can just involve your marketing rep if that is a hot button. But, you know, the living benefits, the annuities, long-term care, uh, life settlements, they are all viable options. And the one thing I wanted to kind of spend a little bit of time is on life settlements just real quickly. To kind of tell you an example, we have done last month alone $3 million in life insurance part in life settlements. So when oftentimes we hear people say, oh, I don't have anyone that does life, I don't have a client that would be fit that picture. Actually, you probably do, probably in the file cabinets if you've been writing life insurance in the past. So just keep in mind, client no longer wants policy coverage. Let's take a look at a settlement if it's an option. Older age client need to be 70 and above, or if they're in their 60s, they have to have a major health change. They were preferred, and now they're going to be at best a table eight. That is something to take a look at. The different scenarios that you're running into or that we are running into, client no longer wants the coverage. Like in Mike's situation, this wasn't a settlement, but if in that situation, if the client said, hey, I don't want coverage, but I've got a term that's convertible and I've got major health concerns, I just don't want to deal with it, I don't want life insurance, I don't want anything of that nature, and I don't want to pay premiums anymore. Okay, that's fine. If they no longer pay premiums, we can convert it, get you a brand new conversion sale, but then also that after it's converted, it's settled immediately and the client's getting cash as a lump sum rather than waiting till they pass away. So just talking to a client about what they're, what do they want? What do they want with their policy? If they're saying they don't want their policy anymore, a settlement's a viable option to take a look at, or if they can't afford their policy. So one thing that we did do last month as well is, is a case that's uh, sold, it was a larger face amount that we split. They wanted to keep the bulk of the death benefit, but they wanted a little bit of help on the premium. So we split the death benefit. It was a $2 million death benefit. They wanted to keep 1.5. We settled 500000 of that, used the premium that we got from that or the cash from that to help fund the rest of their policy that they had. So basically, they're in a better financial position. They still have $1.5 million of death benefit. And because they settled that 500000 they no longer have a premium flow that they have to pay on that one point five. So it's, again, thinking outside the box, keep it in layman's terms have the conversation, then call your marketing rep. We can help do the presentation. We can help you kind of tee it up. But again, just find out what the client's looking for. And from there, we can do the product design. Good points. Indigo. I'm sure you've heard us talk about Indigo once or twice in the past, maybe. <laughs> it is our signature service. So if you're not familiar with it, I would say contact your marketing rep and, and we'll tell you about it. But in a nutshell, it is the multi-carrier easy app. So it, it doesn't have every carrier under the sun on this platform, but it's got a, most of the major ones, all the ones that you would probably use. So you've got a client, you run a quote for your clients, you submit that quote to NBGO. From there, our NBGO team will call the client on your behalf, take the application over the phone, we'll send out DocuSign for signatures, we'll schedule pyramids, we'll do case management. You can view case status anytime, 24-7 in your back office account, in your OES account. And it, on the screen there, you'll see a little bit of a diagram as to the parts that you do versus the parts that we do. So you would do steps one, two, and three, and we more or less take care of the rest. So we may have to get you involved here or there if we can't reach the client for one reason or another. So, But it by far is the easiest way to do it. There's no cut in your commission, nothing like that. So you get paid the same either way. Um, but uh, if you haven't tried NBGO yet, give us a call and try NBGO.
Well, that concludes our webcast, and we really greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to um, join the webcast. If you have any questions or, want, or have any commentary, reach out to your marketing rep. We can walk you through anything that we discuss and uh, even provide more marketing material regarding some of the different things we discussed. We appreciate what you do for National Brokerage, and we look forward to growing your business for the rest of the year. Thanks again.